Algebra 2, Lesson 4, we're going to be talking about identifying functions and using function. Uh, let's actually do this a little bit better. Notation. Notation. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we're going to be talking about things in terms of X and Y values and data sets. A relation is a pairing of input and output values. So what you see here on the left in this illustration is that we have domain and range, we have X and Y, we have input, output. They all mean the same thing. So um, let's see. The things that are the same are X values. Okay. Uh, let's see. Input means the same thing. Domain. Okay. Those are all the same thing. Okay. In fact, what I'm going to do, give me a second here, is... Let's move this over here, okay? X values input, okay, and domain. Range, okay? These are Y values, output, and range, okay? They mean the same thing. Does that help? Okay, because you're going to hear different terms that mean the same thing. Okay, we have, if my input is m in a negative 2, my output in this case is what we're showing or representing visually is 8, 5, and uh, a. Okay, all right. So the domain, the x values, contains the input values, in this case, m in a negative 2. The range, okay, what we're leading to contains the output values of 8, 5, A, and B. Okay, so there's input, there's output. Um, for instance, you know, we'll, we'll work with equations, that type of thing, and you go to like the gas pump, and let's say gas is $2.50 a gallon. Okay, so my equation is going to be my cost, Y equals, you know, uh, 2.5x, okay? What is x at the gas pump? What's my input? Anybody know? Okay. How do I know how much I'm going to pay? It's based upon what? How many gallons I put into the input into my car, right? The output is how much it ends up costing me, right? Okay, but I can't determine the output or the cost that I'm going to pay until I have an input, correct? Okay, so does that make some sense? Okay, I might try to use some real-world values. If I input 10 gallons in my car, I'm going to pay $25, right? Move the decimal point. Okay, so I, in order to get an output, I have to have an input. The, in, the output is dependent upon the input, okay? All right, so the input value, normally x, is an independent variable. It's independent, okay? I can put into my gas tank as many gallons as it'll hold, but I could have gas tanks with me, right? Right? It's up to me. I could stop at a quarter of a gallon, a sixteenth of a gallon, an eighteenth of a gallon. I can stop really wherever I want. I can put as little or as much gas as I want to. It's independent, but the amount that I pay, the output is dependent upon how much I take. Right? It doesn't have a choice. It is what it is. It is based upon the input. All right? So a function is a mapping between those two sets, between the input and the output, that associates with each element of the, what on earth did I write, of the wrist set? That doesn't seem right. Let's, uh, let's fix that. But the, okay. It was because I have like, I don't know. Nope. First set, I have like slight dyslexia, I guess. I don't know. Whenever it comes to typing, sometimes the things don't come out right. So a function is a mapping between the two sets that associates each element of the first set, the domain, 
a unique one and only one element of the second set, the range. Okay? So in this case, look over here. Okay? Domain range. Try this again. Domain range. Okay? I can input negative 5, I can input negative 2, I can input 1, I can input 0. If I input negative 5, I get 4. If I input negative 2, I get 2. If I input 1, I get 0. If I put in 0, I get negative 2. Okay? Now, we could write an equation based upon that and see what the function is. But one thing that you have to realize is that in order for this to be a function, each input has to have uh, one unique output. Meaning that I can't have an input and get two different outputs in order for it to be a function. All right, for instance, would it make a whole lot of sense if I put 10 gallons in my car and it rang up uh, $25 and then, you know, my wife comes through with her van and I put 10 gallons in her van and it's $13 something wrong there, right? I can't input the same value for a function and get two different outputs. Okay. Okay. It's not that, to say that that's impossible, but it's not a function. Okay. Function is whenever I have a unique output per input. I can have more than one of the, more than one of the same input, but the output has to be the same. Okay. All right, so we can look at this visually on a graph. When a relation, and that's just like an equation, is represented with a graph, the vertical line test, we use this to test to see if a graph represents, sorry, a function or not. It's used to determine if the relation is a function. So a graph on the core... Golly. A graph on the coordinate plane represents the graph of a function provided that any vertical line intersects the graph no more than once. So here I've got a function represented by my blue line. Okay, and I've drawn a couple of vertical lines. Do either of those vertical lines cross the blue line more than once? No. Okay, so this is a function, the one on the left. Okay, let's go over here to the right. Okay, I have a circle. Okay. And let's look at the vertical line test. Do any of those vertical lines cross my function or cross, cross my relation, the circle, more than once? Yeah. All right? Look, I see it here, crosses here and here. That's twice. Here and here, that's twice. A circle is not a function. And we have equations for circles, but they're not functions. So we see down here, we have on the left a graph of a function. On the right, we just call that a relation. A relation can be a function. Okay. Um, and a function can be a relation, but not all relations are functions. All functions are relations, not all relations are functions. Okay. All right. So in math, it is sometimes necessary to work with more than one equation at a time if given two equations. So in this case, we have y equals x plus 2 and we have y equals x minus 5. Okay. Now, if I was to evaluate x equals 2, it could be confusing to know which equation to evaluate. Which equation do I want to plug 2 into? I may not want to plug it into both. Okay. So function notation uses parentheses and letters to distinguish between the two equations so that it's not simply y equals and y equals. What we do is we say, okay, we're going to substitute, instead of y equals, we're going to use f of x. That's what we call this right here. We call that f of x. And so that's my first equation. And then we call the second equation, this one, g of x. Okay? They both represent y equals, but they allow me to distinguish between which one I want to input 2 into. So the notation g of 2 equals x plus 2 means to find the value of g uh, in the equation with x equals 2. So g of 2 is x minus 5, and then we're going to replace x with 2. Okay, We're not going to use the f of x equation here. Okay, so then we plug in 2 for x. We get g of 2 equals 2 minus 5. Okay, 
g of 2 equals negative 3. Okay, so I can determine if I have a list of equations and they say, you know, we want to know what h of x is. Well, then I want to go to the h of x equation. Let's say they want h of 3. That means I'm going to plug 3 into x in the h of x equation. I'm not going to plug it into all of them. Okay? So since the answer is negative 3, when x equals 2, the answer is read g of 2 equals negative 3. And that's it. That's where we're at on that. Uh, let's see if we have, have a couple questions we can look at. We have probably time for a couple questions. Which set of x and y values makes the equation uh, 8x squared plus 4 true? All right. Uh, so what this is a matter of, if I look at coordinate notation, this is x, this is y. So I have to remember that with the equation. So for instance, what we would be looking for, this is x, this is y, we would be looking and testing A, we would say 36 equals 8 times. That seems serious. Okay, so we want to see if that statement is true. I plugged in 36 for y and 2 for x. Okay, what is 2 squared? 4. What's 8 times 4? 32. What's 32 plus 4? So is A true? Yes. And you can check and see if the other ones are wrong. Like, for instance, 1 equals 8 times 12 squared plus 4, right? We can already, should already be able to tell that that's incorrect, right? Okay. All right, so do we understand how question number 1 works? Hopefully. Okay, question number 2, identify the domain and range of the relation. Is the relation a function? Okay, the domain is the x values. Should go from 0 to 1, right? Because that's all it does. Okay, the range goes negative 5, negative 1, 3, 6. So far that looks good. Now, we want to answer the question, is this relation a function? So we're going to look at the inputs. What's the, uh, we've got input 0, what's the output? Okay, we've got 1 as an input, what's the output? Negative 1. Negative 3 and 6. Does it have just one output for that input? No. I mean, granted, I know that they're all ones, but is this a function? No. It is a relation. So you'll notice that, okay, that has all the right values there, but it says it's a function. Okay, so I'm looking for, we're looking for not a function, right? So something that answers all the same things but says not a function. A lot of people will miss that question on a test because they're going to find the first thing that matches their domain and range, and they're not going to see the subtle difference between is a function and is not a function, right? This little word right here is a difference between getting a point on a test and not getting a point on a test. Okay. Do we feel like we've kind of got some of this down at least to a certain extent? Okay, I'll give you a chance to work on your homework for the last probably six or so minutes. All right, eight minutes. All right.